Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I'm Chris with a K. Today I am starting a series of videos on messages, but we're looking at three things across all these videos. And hopefully they're all going to be short videos that are going to go together eventually in one video. I'll compile them into one video or a playlist, but we're going to be looking at encryption. We're going to be looking at encoding and we're going to be looking at hiding messages or stenography. And the end goal of a lot of this is to whatever we do, whether we're encrypting or encoding, eventually get it to a format where it's typical characters. So whether we're sending pictures or binary information of any type, of the output is going to be plain text that can be typed so you can send it, for example, through a text message. And it doesn't matter what, you know, medium you're transferring it to, if you can type it, you can send it, you know, even with like Morris code, for example, which we will go over a little bit of that in one of these videos. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to be looking at some open SSL today to encrypt some text. There's lots of ways to en encrypt text. Open SSL is a very, very common way. It's a very secure way. But when it comes to encryption, everyone has all, all their own opinions on what is best. If what I do here, if you have a different opinion on a better way to do it, or maybe just a different way to do it, Comment below and I will review that and maybe do a follow-up video. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, here we go. Encrypting messages using OpenSSL. Probably already have it installed on your system. If not, use your package manager on a Debian-based system. You would sudo apt install OpenSSL and then you'll have it installed. First, we need to have a message to encrypt. So we could pass OpenSSL file if we want to encrypt the whole file. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to encrypt some text that I'm going to type here. I'm going to say echo. This is my hidden message. I type that and it prints my hidden message. At this point, we can pipe it. So the pipe character means take the output of that and pipe it, take it and put it into OpenSSL. What are we going to do here? We're going to dash E to encrypt using this encryption format here. We're going to hit enter. It's going to ask for a password. Type a super secret password. I'm going to use password in this example. And type it twice to verify it. And then we hit that. And it did encrypt it. That's what this is right here. It even tells us it's salted. Okay, so salted means that it throws basically some random information in there to prevent uh, basically brute forcing or lookup tables. Uh, we're not going to get into that too much. You can pass OpenSSL a salt argument, but it seems to do it by default. But it also says here uh, that we're using uh, depreciated keys. So basically, it's saying to use one of these two things. So let's use that same command we just ran and add this dash pbkdf2. So again, look at the output of the command. If it's telling you something like this, it's saying it would be better. We did it, it worked, but it would be better if you add this. We do that, we type in our password, whatever we want it to be a second time, just to confirm. And you can see it encrypted the message right there, okay? In this particular case, somewhat looks like special, like regular characters, looks like there might be a little mark underneath that, that um, parentheses there. We want to make sure that we only get output that is typeable characters. So we're going to add a dash A option. What does the dash A option do? The dash A option says make sure the output is base64 format, which we're going to talk about base64 encoding in a future video. But basically just know this, you can pass anything to base64. It could be any binary file like a JPEG, you know, an image file, a video file, an audio file, a Word document, a PDF, any file, and it will encode it as typeable characters, something you could type on a keyboard. So that's what we're saying here is we're saying encrypt this and then take whatever the output would be, which could have binary information in there, and make sure that it is typeable characters. We do that, we type in our password, whatever password we want, and this is our base64 output. This is something I could type. I could send this as a plain text or in an email and someone can copy that and then decode it, which we'll decode in a moment. But I want to show you one other option that you're not going to use too much, well, you shouldn't use too much at the shell here, but I can just pass it the dash pass option and then we can say pass and give it a password. So this will prevent me from having, it's not going to ask me for a password that I have to type twice. It just says use whatever I type here. Again, I use password, use something better than that, and give me the output, okay? You, this is good to know how to do, but you're not going to want to do that at the shell. Why? Because we have a shell history, right? If I go up arrow on my shell, I can go through previous commands, which means anybody can come in and see uh, your previous things. I guess, I guess I'm passing it the message this way, so that's not good either. But get the idea that you don't necessarily want your password in your history, right? So you have your, your password. 
you might want to use this in a script of some sort where you're going to generate a key and show that to the user or have them input it into your script that you might use to encrypt multiple things. Uh, but you normally don't want to type your password in the command on the shell, right? So we have this output. I also want to show you, if I run that same command multiple times, notice that the output is different. Just look at the last few characters. They're not the same. That shows that it is salting the output. It's, it's even though we're encrypting the same message using the same password every time and the same form of encryption, it is giving us different output each time. Again, to prevent rainbow table, lookup tables, things where people have encrypted things like this before and they have just a long list of stuff that they're checking against, okay? It just makes it harder for people to crack your password, right? Or your your code, your message. Okay, so we have this message. I can now text this to somebody, email it to someone, type it to someone, send it to somebody how in whatever way I want, right? And the only way someone should be able to decode this is if they know my password and also know what type of encryption I use, which uh, we're not gonna worry about too much. But I can say now echo and I can pass it that information. Again, if I do that, just outputs that information. But again, we're gonna pipe it into basically the same thing here. So we can give it all the same information or mostly the same information. Something we're gonna change though is where it says E here we're gonna, for encrypt, we're gonna set it to D for decrypt. I'm gonna hit enter and there is our hidden, our, our encrypted message now unencrypted. Let's go ahead and do it again with uh, just a different message. I will say, hello world. Boom, I have the output that I can send however I want, email, text, whatever, I could break it up and someone can put it back together. And then I can take that and I can put that into OpenSSL with the same password and it gets the output that we put in. So that is a very simple, easy, fast way, secure way to encrypt uh, a message. Again, we're passing the text here. You can also give it a file to to read and then give you the output that way. That way you're not necessarily typing your message right here on the shell um, and your password. It's written to a hard drive, then you gotta delete and then if something gets a hard, your hard drive, there's a whole bunch of security things to think about. Uh, you know, doing it on the shell here might be a good idea if you're working out of RAM, you could work out of RAM only and then delete stuff. Now we're getting into whole other conversations, but this is how you encrypt and decrypt a message very basically using OpenSSL. Again, uh, people have different opinions on um, format encryptions. You can look more into any of the programs I'm gonna talk about in this series by using the man command, the manual command, so man open SSL. It will give you a whole bunch of information on different things you can do. And you can see here that it gives you uh, different options for different types of encryption, right? So you can look more into that and decide what's best for you. Thanks for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I hope that you have a great day.